have finished, but I later on I realized that I think I have missed out one preparation. Okay, and then after that we'll do the preparation of phenol. All right, we'll do the preparation of phenol. Or what should I do? Should I finish the uh, chemical properties of alcohol after that? We should go for uh, preparation of phenol. Huh? Okay, we'll finish the properties of alcohol, then we'll go for phenol. So now one uh, reaction which I missed out in the preparation of uh, alcohol is the hydrolysis of ester. <clears throat> hydrolysis of ester. We have prepared uh, alcohols by the reduction of esters. Now we go for hydrolysis of ester. And this is the easiest method to prepare alcohols. Hydrolysis of ester. <clears throat> Hydrolysis means reaction with water. All right. Now, esters can be hydrolyzed both in acidic media and alkaline media. <clears throat> Hydrolysis of esters in both acidic and alkaline media give a mixture of carboxylic acids. And alcohols. All right. So now we'll do the hydrolysis of of esters. So when ester is treated with dilute mineral acid, like dilute hydrochloric acid, dilute sulfuric acid, dilute phosphoric acid. Most of the time we use dilute hydrochloric acid or phosphoric uh, sulfuric acid. And if you warm it, then you find the hydrolysis of ester takes place. Okay. So in that case, let me write here CH3 See, I have taken this. This is called ethyl acetate okay and its IUPC name is ethyl ethanol okay <clears throat> now in this case we add dilute acids so it can be HCl or H2SO4 dilute. Huh? But one thing you remember there, the hydrolysis of esters in dilute acid is a reversible reaction, reversible reaction. And in your school, I think you have already done chemical kinetics. If you have done chemical kinetics for your information, though you find there are two reagents are there, but this reagent is in large excess because of that, it is not second order reaction. It is called pseudo first order reaction. All right. Now it will give us acetic acid and TC2H5OH. All right. C2H5OH. But this hydrolysis takes uh, some time. This process is slow. Clear? Yeah. Anyway. For your information, huh, I will do this mechanical, mechanical because it is important to know. <clears throat> so, mechanism of hydrolysis of ester. Mechanism.
step one. Say we have taken here AC. So ACL will break down to give you H plus and CL minus. Okay. Step one. Step two. So it is CH3, C, O, O, C2, H5. And you have here H plus. So what will happen? It will undergo protonation. It is a proton is added. Once you have protonated, this oxygen becomes trivalent. Okay. In this case, you find this oxygen is becomes extremely uh, electron deficient. So this oxygen pulls the electron towards it. And what do you get here? You get here CH3, C, OH, H, O, C2H5. Now this carbon has become electron deficient. Then I told you water is a strong nucleophile. Why? Because each oxygen in water contains two lone pairs. It will come and attack. So once it attack, so in that case, see here, you will get this. Mechanisms are not difficult, huh? See this. So now, this oxygen again become trivalent. What is going to happen? You will find from there, this hydrogen, huh? from here, it will, this will break. Once it breaks, this oxygen is a stronger nucleophile than this, because it is having an L, L, electron loading alkyl group. So it will immediately pick up this. Okay, so what has happened now? So this proton migrates from one atom to another in the same molecule. So because we call it proton exchange. Okay, we call it proton exchange. So what we're going to get? We'll get here C is three, C O A. Then you get here. C2H5H. Now this oxygen has become trivalent, and you get now this. Okay. Now look there. This oxygen again become trivalent, and here a molecule of alcohol is expelled. All right. See what you get now here. You get now here this. OH and C2H5O. So alcohol goes out. Goes out. And now this oxygen is going to lose this hydrogen, which initially taken it from the ACL. That is, ACL is acting as a catalyst. So we we call it deprotonation. This step is not reversible. So you get here now this. So ultimately, you get acid and alcohol. All right. So now, again, I am repeating the mechanism. Okay. The hydrolysis of ester is carried out in acidic medium. So, <clears throat> as it is a dilute acid, and HCl is a very strong acid. It undergoes complete dissociation. So from this, from this, you'll find that ester molecules get protonated, protonated, and which makes this carbon highly electron deficient. Immediately, the nucleophilic attack of the of the electron deficient carbon takes place by the water molecule, and in this case, it forms a trivalent oxygen. And this one undergoes proton exchange, mm -hmm. uh, 
and leading to the expulsion of the alcohol molecule. Finally, it undergoes deprotonation and you get with the proton back. This is the mechanism. Clear? <coughs> so, <coughs> now we'll go for alkaline hydrolysis. Alkaline hydrolysis of ester is known as saponification. I think you've already heard the word term saponification in your class nine or 10. Did you hear this word saponification earlier? Hello? Yes, sir. No, sir. I've heard it. Saponification method is being used to prepare soap from fat. Soap or the well are nothing but the triesters of glycerol. Okay. So when you boil it with a <coughs> dilute solution of sodium, sorry, not dilute, a concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, that ester, you get hydrolyzed and you get glycerol is an alcohol and you get the sodium salt of the soap. Okay. So, sorry, sodium salt of the fatty acids and that sodium salt of fatty acids are nothing but soap. Okay, now we'll go for alkaline hydrolysis. <clears throat> so here we have taken, say I have taken here R1, CO, O, R2, and you can treat it with sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide aqueous. So what you get here now, you get here the sodium salt of carboxylic acids and you'll get corresponding alcohol. Here it is not a reversible, this is an irreversible reaction. And here, what is the rate of this reaction here? It is the second order reaction. And hydrolysis of ester in acidic medium is pseudo first order. This is a first order reaction. And this is second order reaction. Okay. So let me write here now CH3, C, O, C2H5, and you get here sodium hydroxide. Okay, if you heat it, you'll get CH3, C. So you'll get here the sodium salt of carboxylic acid. So you'll get here sodium acetate. And you will get here ethanol. All right. <clears throat> See, large amount of the fatty alcohols. Fatty alcohols means what? Where you find the carbon chain has already crossed a long chain alcohols. We get it by the process of alkaline hydrolysis of those esters. Okay. <clears throat> so. This long chain alcohols are required for manufacture of soaps. Okay. <clears throat> so these are fatty alcohols, we get it from the alkaline hydrolysis. Okay. Now I'll now I'll come for the properties of alcohols. So first I'll go for the physical properties. Physical. <clears throat> All right. So you'll find, <clears throat> see, the lower member alcohols. What is the lower member alcohols? What is the first member of alcohol? So this is one carbon, methanol, second carbon, two carbon, ethanol. So you'll find lower member alcohol has a characteristic smell and they are colorless liquids. With increasing molecular masses, 
you'll find the <coughs> these substances become orderless liquids and when you go to the higher level in that case when you cross the 12 carbon that is fatty alcohols these are colorless waxy soft solids so these are the physical state okay now we'll come for boiling points boiling point so boiling point i am going to discuss huh? one by one. see here first the <clears throat> Boiling points of alcohols are much higher than the boiling point of corresponding hydrocarbon or haloalkanes of comparable molecular mass. Boiling point of alcohols are higher than <coughs> corresponding hydrocarbons or haloalkanes of comparable molecular masses. Now why it is like this? This is because this is because alcohol molecules are associated with each other through inter molecular hydrogen bonding. Okay, so let me show how you have seen. We know this oxygen hydrogen bond is highly polar because of the large difference of electronegativity. So, this type of species can directly show uh, the hydrogen bond. So, you like this? So, you find hundreds of molecules will join with each other through intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Okay, is there anyone from army school? Hello? See, I think morning classes, if you feel that Sar is going to send video and let us sleep, in this case, I'll stop sending video. Anyone from army school? Huh? Nobody? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. So this is one. All right. Now, second point. What is the second point? So here we have compared with other molecules. Now, second point is that uh, if you go along the homologous series, homologous series means what? That is, if I go from methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol. This is called homologous series. So when you go along with this homologous series, the boiling point of alcohol increases with increasing molecular masses. So you can write going along the homologous series. The boiling point of alcohols 
increases. Sorry, boiling point increase with increase in length of alkyl chain. You now, why it is like this? Because with increasing in length of alkyl chain, the surface area of the molecule increases, by which their intermolecular forces of attraction increases, and hence their boiling point increases. Please remember, when the length of the molecule increases, surface area increases, when the surface area increases, attraction increases, and when the attraction increases, the boiling point is going to increase. Now, third, boiling point of isomeric alcohols. Alcohols decreases. With increase in branching. What is the meaning of isomeric alcohols? It is with the same molecular formula, you can write different alcohols. Okay, let us say an example. So, example is what? Say, I have taken a CH3, CH2, CH2OH. Sorry. CH2. Come on, it then. Butan 1 or. All right. Now, <clears throat> next. CH3, CH, CH3, CH2. Did I make any mistake? No, I did not make See, this is butan to all. And what is this? This is tertiary butan. All right, you will find this. Why it is like this? Because with increasing branching, the molecule, the volume of the molecule decreases, surface area decreases, attraction decreases, and hence the boiling point decreases. So this is important. What you can say that with increase in branching, uh, the surface area of the alcohol molecule decreases, and as a result, their internal molecular forces of attraction decreases and boiling point decreases. Okay. Let me wait. We had some ink. So many days I did not write. So the pen has become very hungry. So who is there in the class? One son is there. One son is. Hello. One son, hello, one son. Huh? One son is not there. Who is there? Ayushman is there. Ayushman? I just I want to know now from your in your BSF school, what chapter is being taken? Hello. So we're revising now the first four chapters. Acha. And uh, then in Anthony's, anyone is there? Yes, sir. Acha. What chapter you are doing now in Anthony's? Me, sir, finished. Hello, Krishna. Oh, no, sir. Acha. Then what Sarkalita is teaching? Uh, sir, he has started a new chapter. 
newspaper has a name, na? Yes, sir. Uh, what is the name? Hmm? Uh, sir, I don't know. You do not know. See, when you were born, you had a name, na? People did not call you X, na? Huh? <laughs> yes, sir. You people will not rectify. Hmm, though there is lockdown is going on, but you have lockdown in your brain only. Okay, now we will go for solubility. Solubility means what? That is, we are going to check in which one it is soluble. Solubility. So we will write now here. Yeah. We will write lower alcohols are highly at the lower alcohols na just to make it clear this is from c1 to c4 are highly soluble in water why why it is highly soluble because they easily form intermolecular hydrogen bonding with water molecules okay from edmunds uh, who is there dristi is there means yes. yes yes Art. yes i am there she is there yeah yeah but she is not speaking i am speaking oh acha acha good morning good morning acha mm -hmm. now I am so happy to hear your voice after so many days. <laughs> uh, what chapter your uh, miss is taking? D block elements. D, D and F block elements. Yeah? D and F block elements. Then uh, organic she did not start. Organic we finished halo alkenes and halo arenes. Acha, good, good. Uh, and Sir Felix is taking what? Sir. Felix is not taking anything as of now. He'll take organic. Oh, okay. maybe Sir Felix is my student now. So he may be a little ignorant like me about this computer business. Huh. <laughs> okay. anyway. See, soluble, <coughs> they're soluble in water because they easily form intermolecular hydrogen bonding with water molecules. So let's see. Hmm. Thank you, Drishti, for attending my classes. I'm feeling so grateful. Uh -huh. I have been attending for the past three, four days. Acha. Okay, okay. All right, I'll do something in your next birthday. Next birthday, I'll give you one alarm clock. Yes, many are there who cannot get up now. Please find them. Everyone, I'll present one, one alarm clock. Acha, like this. See here. So it forms very effective intermolecular hydrogen bonding. But you'll find the size of the molecule decreases. And the sizes of the molecule decreases. In that case, the, the effectivity of the hydrogen bond decreases. Okay. So <clears throat> in that case, what we'll write? However, With increasing size, the solubility decreases. See here, very clearly you see. You see. see here, this is see here. This bond is very polar, okay? But this 
alkyl group has come from alkane. Alkanes are not soluble in water. If you pour petrol, if you pour kerosene in water, is it soluble? It is not soluble. So as the length of the alkyl chain increases, insoluble part in alcohol is increasing. That we call it anything which likes water or soluble in water, we call them hydrophilic. And if you are not, we call it hydrophobic. So as the length of the alkyl chain is increasing, the hydrophobic behavior of the alkyl group strongly opposes the hydrophilic nature of the OH group. And that restricts their solubility. Okay, the time will come, we'll find the alcohols will not be soluble at all. Mm. So what should I write now here? With increasing size, the solubility decreases because hydrophobic nature of alkyl groups predominates and predominates and so the solubility decreases so this is the this is important all right now I'm going to write the second point. What is the second point? Second point, we'll try to see with the isomeric alcohols. If you obtain an isomeric alcohol in boiling point, what did you see? As the branching increases, the boiling point decreases. But here is interesting there. Yeah. In isomeric alcohols, as the sizes of the molecule decreases, the solubility increases. Why? These molecules are smaller. Whenever you make a solution, solute goes inside the solvent molecules. If the size of the solutes are large, the space within the water molecules cannot accommodate. All right. So in that case, that is, they become insoluble. Same is the case with the alcohol also. So what should I write now here? Right here for isomeric alcohols, the solubility increases with branching because as the sizes of the molecule decreases Their solvation increases. But last of all, right? Third, however, they are soluble in almost all organic solvents. All right, so this is the story, physical properties. Please remember, alcohols are generally highly toxic in nature, highly toxic. 
first of all, methanol is highly toxic. If any of these people, because people are mad for alcohol, hmm? so if the ethanol which they drink, mind you, ethanol also also toxic, okay? Go, oh, it is being called as alcoholic beverages. The meaning of beverage means the drink which helps us to maintain our health is a booster, all right? So people initially give an excuse that if I take alcohol, then my health will be all right. It's not like that. Initially, people drink alcohol to maintain better health. Later on, alcohol drinks their health. All right? So, because ethanol affects the central nervous system. You have seen a person uh, under the influence, though he can behave any way he likes. He cannot think properly. He lost his clear vision also. All right? Huh? He, there is a saying in Shillong that at daytime the drains are by the side of the road and at night the drain comes in the middle of the road because this fellow does not understand where he is working, whether he is working by the middle of the road or on the drain. Okay. But if the ethanol which people drink is being laced with methanol, if it is below 5%, the central nervous system is damaged and people become blind. And if it is, if it crosses more than 5%, that may be his last drink in his life. So most of the alcohols are found to be extremely harmful. Okay? Maybe but you have like, seen, yeah. this day, in these days you have seen this hand sanitizer, whatever you are using, you know what is the main alcohol which is being used in hand, hand sanitizer? This is isopropanol. Huh? Isopropanol, this contains isopropanol, glycerol, and hydrogen peroxide. Clear? Now, plenty of the hand sanitizers are being sold, and what about the price is there? In Shillong, it is sold around two to three times of price. But the question is, how do you know the which hand sanitizer is really genuine? So you should know how to do because you are from chemistry background. So what you can do, you take, you can take little water in a small bowl or a cup, put some dust particle on the on the water. So dust particles will spread on the surface of the water. Then you put one or two drops of the hand sanitizer. Moment the drop falls on the surface of the water, immediately it drives away the uh, the dust particle towards the periphery. Then you know this is genuine. Otherwise, this is only alcohol, and they put some uh, fragrance because hand sanitizers are not supposed to have any fragrance. But they have put it, and we buy it on the basis of fragrance, thinking that it is a body spray. Huh? Okay, do not buy like a mad person, you are educated. All right, now we'll go for chemical properties. I told you, we are intelligent human beings. So we are not going to buy heart. Okay? We are not going to buy heart. So we'll look at the molecule, try to find the weakness of the bond, and we'll break it, and we'll, each one will call it a chemical property. So this is an alcohol. This is an alcohol. See here. Look. This is highly electronegative. Okay? This is next to fluorine. So, in this case, this bond will be highly polar. So, how many types of bond do we have here? We have oxygen hydrogen bond. We have carbon oxygen bond, we have carbon hydrogen bond, and we have carbon carbon bond. I told you carbon carbon bond is very difficult to break because it is between the same atom. All right? So, in that case, this is highly polar. So, we can get property due to breaking or cleavage of oxygen hydrogen bond. So, I'll write here A. Okay? So, if when the hydrogen goes out, Oxygen is going to remove the electron of hydrogen. So it will go out as H plus. 
So any molecule which gives us H plus, we know that this should be acidic because only acids gives us H plus. So you can say, yeah, A. It is properties due to cleavage of oxygen hydrogen bond or acidic properties of alcohols now next to this we, uh, this is the weakest bond next is this one what is going to happen now here i'll put here b see between carbon and oxygen which bond electronegative oxygen when this oh will go it will go as oh minus if it becomes oh minus then this will be c plus so another electron rich molecule has to take its place and we know when one electron rich molecule replaces the other electron rich molecule we call them as nucleophilic substitution reaction okay so now we write properties due to cleavage of carbon oxygen bond or nucleophilic substitution of OH group. All right. Now see the next is that it may happen the OH will not go alone. Okay, which may go out in the form of molecule. I told you any carbon which bears the functional group, we call it alpha. And next is beta. Clear? So, what may happen? See here OH and H. So, in that case, it may go like this it may lose a molecule of water. So, I told you when one molecule loses another uh, molecule. Whatever reaction you call it, we call it elimination reaction. And what elimination is beta elimination reaction. So what I can write now? Properties due to simultaneous cleavage of beta carbon hydrogen and carbon oxygen bonds or what we we'll call it or beta elimination or dehydration of alcohols. All right, so it is C. Now it may happen this hydrogen and this hydrogen may go as hydrogen gas. All right, so we'll put it D. So what should I write now here? Huh? Yes, I don't have any space to write, huh? Oh, no, 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 yeah. So right now, I have to sit down. D. Properties due to cleavage of alpha. Alpha CH and OH bonds. Sorry, property due to simultaneous cleavage.
cleavage of alpha CH and OH bonds. Or what? Loss of hydrogen is called. Is it not oxidation? Or oxidation. Now, and this is the last one is what? The properties due to this alkyl group. So, this is E. So, we write now here E. <coughs> properties due to alkyl group. So, this is the summary. Please write it. Huh? So, once you understand this one, chemical properties of alcohol is nothing for you. With, with, with closing your eyes, you can interpret. Here to here, please write. I will give you two, three minutes. Then after that, one by one, one I will listen. More. Please, please write. Dear, have you finished? Hmm? Yes, sir. Acha. Acha, Miss Rao finished. Acha, Aditi is there or not? Aditi? Others name to I cannot remember. I think uh, one list, I think uh, someone has sent to me now. This list I have to. See from your WhatsApp, then I have to write down. From BSF school, how many are there? Please go on telling the name. Who is there? Hmm? Eugenie is there, Eugenia. Then? Then what? Sir Hello? Daniel. No, Daniel is there. Then Mr. Slot. Mr. Slow, his name should not be Slow, he should be Mr. Slow to change his spelling. Uh, Mr. Slow is there. And from Lavan School, Lavan is there. Hello, Lavan. Oh, no reply. Okay, then, then BSF School, Aishman is there. Uh, then, who, who else is there? Sadiqi. Huh? Said so eighty. Oh, yeah, good. Yes, yes. Okay, finish now. To we'll start. So now we are going to do the which one? We'll do the first one. 
it is properties due to cleavage of oxygen hydrogen bond. Okay. That is, we are going to do this one. R C H O H. Okay. See, we are saying when this alcohol molecule loses hydrogen, hydrogen goes out as acetic. Okay. Hydrogen goes out as H plus. And we say any molecule which loses H plus, it is acidic. Clear? Now let's see <clears throat> how fast the hydrogen can go. See here. Between oxygen and hydrogen, who is more electronegative? Oxygen. Clear? So if this oxygen can pull electron faster from this bond, then only you'll find it will go be C R C H H O C. It has only two electrons. So these are the two electrons, and each bond contains how many electrons? Two more. So I'll write here this and C. In these two electrons, there one is belongs to oxygen, other belongs to hydrogen because they form a covalent bond. So the electron of hydrogen has come. So for that, I have to write one negative charge. Okay. And this is H plus. Clear? Now, look. This I have seen the molecule from this side. That oxygen is pulling electron from the hydrogen. Now, see. Look at this. This is an alkyl group. We know alkyl groups are strong electron withdrawing, so donating. Strong electron donating. These days we do not call the electron donating. We call it electron repelling. But I, why electron repelling? See, already oxygen having two electrons. Electrons are negatively charged. When it supplies electron, do not feel that the repulsion takes place. Because of them, we have also called them as electron repelling group okay so right now we are you should know learn all these words electron repelling see so oxygen is pulling the electron by force from hydrogen and alkyl group is supply electron so once the formation of this species will take place will it be stable it will not be stable why? Because of repulsion. Mm -hmm. So in that case, see, none of us in our life, we wanted to go to an uncomfortable position. None of us. So in that case, what will happen? The process will become slow. And if the process becomes slow, number of H plus ion in the solution also will become less. So in that case, we have to say the alcohols are very weak as it's. So in such case, there, I will not put an arrow like this. I'll put a small arrow. It means this has a very less tendency to go to this side. But this species has a very high tendency to come to this side. That is the, that is the, Acidity of alcohol are less. Achha, now, what is this? Is it not a primary molecule here? It is a primary alcohol. Now, we will go for a secondary alcohol. Okay. For simplicity, I will write like this. Hmm? Now, suppose I have taken a secondary alcohol. Okay. If I have taken a secondary alcohol, look. Does it not have two electron repelling group? In this case, repulsion will be more than the primary alcohol group. All right. So in that case, you will find the acidity of secondary alcohol will be less than that of the primary alcohol. Now, when I go for tertiary alcohol, in that case, you will find it has three electron repelling or electron donating group. 
so tertiary alcohol are weakest acid weakest acid so let us write now we arrange them in order of the acidity so we we'll write thus acidity is what we we'll write ch3 ch a o8 primary then ch3 ch3 h o8 secondary and this is this is tash okay this is the one okay so please write down this term acidity only this one you write Finish. Yes, sir. So now see, in class eleven, you remember that you had a chapter called ionic equilibrium. We have in last chapter of the first book equilibrium. So there have we have you not read about the the uh, different uh, concepts of acids? Hmm? so we have read about the rns concept then we have read about the the uh, bronsted lowry concept we have read about the lewis acid base concept in that case did you not hear a word called conjugate acid and base okay yes sir so in that case see here if it is a if it is an acid then this is the conjugate base of this conjugate base so we generally write as c c and we also have learned the conjugate base of a weak acid is this is a strong base conjugate base of a weak acid is strong base okay so in that case the this tertiary butanol or sorry tertiary alcohol is the weakest acid so its conjugate base will be the strongest followed by this and this so let us now write there yeah, the <coughs> basicity of conjugate basis of alcohols so here i'm going to write this conjugate base when the conjugate base will be there i have to write like this then comes this and then comes please remember all these things Mm -hmm. this. Okay, in your CBSE book, this is given, but somehow this is not being given. Like this. Not 
I believe we are finished. Okay. I'm going to wrap up. Now we'll do the examples of the acidic properties. Okay. See here. Chemically, how will you prove a compound is acidic? Compound is as a chemical you can prove by a litmus test. Okay? Or, okay, let us say, first, how will you do it by litmus test? But mind it. If the substance is very weakly acidic, then it will not respond to the litmus. So, we can write that alcohols do not react with litmus to turn red litmus to red, red litmus blue right down that alcohols are weakly acidic in nature and does not turn red litmus blue Then next point to write. <clears throat> so can you repeat? Alcohols are weakly acidic in nature and do not turn red litmus, red litmus, L I T M U S blue. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Blue litmus red. Cannot turn blue litmus red. Huh? This is the problem of the old age. Nah? Huh? Blue litmus red. Okay. Now we are going to write next is you will find how we put chemically. Chemically, we can prove by reacting alcohol with active metals. Huh? Electrochemistry, you have already read. In, you'll find that the metals which are metals which have negative standard reduction potential can displace hydrogen from acids. But as alcohol is a very weak acid, then we have to react with those metals which has large negative standard reduction potential. Or in simple words, we can say highly active or highly electrophoretic metals. That is, alcohols react with highly electropositive metals like alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, and aluminium. Al alkali metals means what? Lithium, sodium, potassium. Alkaline metals is what? Beryllium though, but beryllium does not react. Right? Calcium, magnesium, and aluminium and liberate hydrogen. So right now we are R, CH2, OH, plus sodium. Sodium is going to replace hydrogen. So what you will get now we are R, CH2, O, and A, and you will get here hydrogen. But here this is coming out from the hydrogen atom only. All right. So I write it H2, I write here 2, 2, 2, and H2. Okay. So this is an alcohol. Okay. This is called L sodium. Alkoxide. Sodium alkoxide. Okay. This is this. See, this is a conjugate base of alcohol. All right, now let me take this. CH3, CH2, OH plus 2 sodium will give us CH3, CH2, O, Na, and H2. So this is called sodium ethoxide. 
So if we have used methanol, we have to call sodium methoxide. Okay. Similarly, suppose I have taken here magnesium and I have reacted with methanol. Yeah, I would have got here magnesium O is three twice and hydrogen. This is called magnesium methoxide. Now, if I have taken aluminium and I have reacted with this is a secondary alcohol, huh? This is commonly known as isopropanol. Isopropanol, or you know, it's called propan to all. All right, valency of aluminum is what? Valency of aluminum is three. So now I'll write here O CH CH3. So I have to write here three. It's called aluminum isopropoxide. Now, if I write it three here, then I'll have three hydrogen atoms. Three hydrogen atoms will give me one and a half molecular hydrogen. So this is not possible. So what I will write now here, I multiply everything by two, it will be six. So we'll have six hydrogen, so I can write here now, 3H. This is called aluminium. Hmm? Iso is a very important compound for reduction. Aluminium, isopropyl, no reduction oxidation. Huh? That you, when you, I, this is not in a syllabus, so still I do for your attention. This is aluminum isopropoxy. Clear? So, this has given us the first information experimentally that alcohols are acidic because you can displace hydrogen from alcohols. Clear? Yes, sir. So, I do. Two more reactions after that should. Now we know alcohol should react with bases. Acid should always react with base to form salt and water. So let me see that whether alcohol reacts with bases like hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, sodium bicarbonate, uh, pot uh, sodium carbonate like this. So try to understand. I have reacted this. So this is an acid. This is a base. So what it should give us? Salt and water. Now you already know. So I told you it is a base and so it is a salt, but it's basic in nature. Why? Because it's the conjugate base of alcohol and what do you get now here water i'll write the water like this to show because see this is hydroxide so if this is the base this is conjugate okay now which is stronger base stronger base is hydroxide or ethoxide see here This is more basic, or this is more basic. This is more basic. Why? Because you have an electron donating group. So, in that case, the density of electron on hydroxide is or oxygen. So, density of electron on oxygen is much more than this oxygen because hydrogen cannot donate electron. All right. So, in that case, you find that this is a stronger base and this is a weaker base. Now between alcohol and water, which is a stronger acid? Obviously, water is a stronger acid. Why? Because 
because of the presence of electron ring group, its dissociation has decreased, but it does not have. So, in this equation, let's say which side is stronger? So, this is a strong base, and this is a strong acid, and this is a weak acid. And this is a weak base. Now tell me, dear, will the reaction will go from left to right or right to left? It will go from right to left. So this reaction is not possible. So please remember that alcohols, though acidic, do not react with alkalis or do not react with bases. Huh? So when it does not react with sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, how can it react with weak bases like sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate? So what we are going to write, we we'll write now here that alcohol do not react with Bases. Alcohols do not react with bases. Please remember. Now I'm going to, this also not being explained in your book. So, anyway, this is extra information. Now, one more reaction which I'm going to do. See, when I have taken the hello alkenes in the preparation of the Grignard reagent, I told you. The Grignard reagent not only reacts with water, it reacts with any other reagents which can give you H plus. And in that case, it will liberate the corresponding hydrocarbon. So, reaction with Grignard reagent. Reaction with Grignard reagents. Grignard reagents immediately react with alcohols to liberate. Corresponding hydro carbons. Okay, so let me write here CH3 Mg Br. This is this, this is this. And suppose I have taken here, huh? say I have taken here methanol. See, you know, this is this. And this is it. So immediately you'll find this will go and pick up, and this will be converted to methane. And you'll get here methoxy, sorry, methoxy magnesium. See here. Mm. So we chemically we test an alcohol unknown compound is alcohol. What we do? We put a solution of grignard reagent in dry ether to the sample. Immediately see methane is a gas. Immediately we'll find the gas will be liberated. Now you can say no, no, this is alcohol. Clear? So after this much, rest we'll do uh, tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, huh? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, sir. Lie up. <laughs> this fellow <laughs> lie up. Okay, bye.